So I want to do a quick video about stevia. So I talked a lot about allulose and I talked about monk fruit and stevia is the third of the natural uh, occurring sugars that I think are very good and useful on a low carb or ketogenic diet. And um, stevia has been around quite a bit longer. It's actually been used in some cultures for uh, you know, several hundred years, you know, up to 1500 years ago, people started using this in some cultures you know, to sweeten certain bitter drinks or bitter foods. And um, we have also commercially, it's been produced a lot longer and we have a lot more data on it. Now, when you look at studies, sometimes it's a bit confusing and you look at uh, videos out there and some people say, oh, this is very dangerous. It has a lot of adverse effects. And some people say, oh, it's, it's, it's a great thing to use. And um, I think what we need to keep in mind is that when we use these sweeteners, even these natural sweeteners like stevia, allulose and monk fruit, we don't want to guzzle them all day long. You know, we want to use them in moderation to sweeten maybe things like, like once a day or so. Let's say you have, after your lunch, you have a dessert with chocolate and that chocolate is sweetened with one of those sweeteners. And I think that's absolutely fine. Then we're talking about very small amounts. Because when you think of, you know, in terms of general overall health, when we go on a low, on a low carb or ketogenic diet, the goal is really to decrease carbohydrate intake. And if we're just replacing what was sugar, with these artificial sweeteners, you know, there's also this uh, un unfortunate bad mindset of craving the wrong foods. And many of these foods, even if we use these replacements, are not going to be very good. So I think like using them once a day or so for like a dessert or something is absolutely fine. And then we're not running the risk of taking these high amounts in that could be problematic. Because there were some studies, for example, in rodents where they gave them tremendous amounts of stevia and uh, it's an amount that could never be replicated in humans anyway. It's, it's like an exorbitant amount. And then there was some fertility issues. So the question is, first of all, these are rodents. Yeah, they're mammals, but they're not, they're not us. They're not humans. Would this even be a, applicable to us? That's the first question. And the second thing is, it's impossible almost for us to consume that quantity. Now, in uh, smaller quantities, it can even be quite beneficial. Stevia has some health benefits and it's been used in cultures for, for hundreds of years, for centuries with medicinal purposes. I think today we have better medications if we need to address those issues, but you know, it has some of these benefits. And stevia uh, acts sort of as a vasodilator and that's where most of these benefits kind of uh, come about. It acts sort of like a calcium channel blocker. And in medicine, we sometimes give a calcium channel blocker as one of the medications to manage high blood pressure. What it does, it causes vasodilation. So it specifically allows the relaxation of muscles in the blood vessels, in the arteries in this case. And when you think of your body as a, as a closed system, when you widen, when you relax the muscles in the arteries, you know, you, you widen the arteries, you increase the lumen space, and therefore you drop the pressure. You know, if you think of it this way, it kind of makes sense. So it does help with blood pressure regulation and also by, by virtue of vasodilation, it does help with things like irritable bowel syndrome. There are some people that have irritable bowel syndrome uh, that is very uh, predominant with diarrhea. And what stevia does because of the vasodilation in the digestive tract, it slows the motility down a bit. So it decreases the uh, motility and therefore helps with uh, symptoms of diarrhea, for example, that's another application. It supports kidney function, again, similar because of a vasodilatory effect. So it allows more uh, blood flow to the kidneys and, then, and it allows the filtration rate, the glomerular filtration rate, rate in the kidney to improve. Um, again, these are very small improvements and certainly at the amounts that we should probably consume that are safe, there's not a huge effect. But I think, um, again, we're not trying to treat things with stevia, but it's just something that stevia supports. And I think it's good to see that instead of making things worse, this is one artificial, or no, sorry, this is one natural sweetener that can make things better. So, so kidney function can improve blood uh, uh, sugar, blood glucose is also managed by this very well. And sometimes for diabetics, you know, we recommend for them to replace things that they use with sugar with stevia initially before they slowly get away from sweet tasting things. Now, it's not just because we're replacing sugar with stevia that the blood sugar gets under control. There's actually a mechanism behind it because stevia uh, appears to support the function of insulin. So it makes the insulin work better. When you think about type two diabetes, um, you know, initially we're actually making more and more and more insulin because you know, there's a resistance to insulin. Insulin doesn't work so well anymore. Insulin's function is uh, to bring sugar or carbohydrates into the cells. The second function, unfortunately, from insulin is uh, the storage of fat. 
But um, in terms of the storage, sorry, in terms of bringing sugar into the cells, when there's insulin resistance, it just doesn't work so well anymore. And it seems that from the studies that stevia supports the function of insulin. So that's actually a very good thing, especially for uh, early diabetes. Now, it has also been found to have anti-tumor function. So it actually, uh, you know, decreases the risk of developing tumors, developing cancer, and it also slows the rate of growth of existing tumors. So it has an anti-cancer function. Again, I think it's a very mild function. I wouldn't recommend stevia as a treatment for this either, but it's good to know that instead of making these things worse in small amounts, it actually might be uh, helpful. So that's another interesting fact about it. And, uh, you know, so again, all these kind of uh, issues that are improved by um, stevia, and I would say uh, specifically the blood pressure issues, kidney function, these are very interesting things, you know, and then helping with insulin resistance, is at least something that we know when we're replacing sugar with stevia, we're doing something positive. So should we treat with stevia? No. I mean, stevia is not potent enough, especially in the amounts that we recommend. Should we use it all day long? No. I think that there could be problems. and we don't need to. So besides that, um, we want to uh, not take in too much on a daily basis. We shouldn't take uh, too much of sweet tasting substances in any way. And like I said earlier, I think what the important thing will be to just use it maybe once a day. Let's say you have a lunch and then you have your chocolate dessert. I think that's fine. Uh, I wouldn't use it with more than one meal a day. Again, the goal is when we're looking at um, fat loss and we're looking at overall health, to have time between our meals to allow insulin to uh, come down again. We don't want to spike our insulin all the time. That's how many other disease processes are happening, not just type 2 diabetes. Um, the optimal nutrition, I would say, is having about three scheduled meals a day, about every four hours. That gives you about an eight hour period of eating in the day. So for me, for example, this could be 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 6 p.m. And we're making those meals a good size so that they're filling, they have good fats, good proteins, and then again, minimize carbohydrates. If one of those meals, for example, lunch will have, um, you know, something sweet, like a dessert or whatever in there, I think that's fine. For me, a lot of times in the morning, um, I have some uh, of the Magic Spoon cereal. It's a cereal, you can get this on, on Amazon. It is a, a protein-based cereal, it doesn't have any grains in it. And it's sweetened with actually all three of the natural sweeteners. So there's stevia, allulose, and then you also have monk fruit in there. And <clears throat> again, we're talking about a small amount, you know, not a, not a huge uh, bowl of this. And so having a bit like that once a day, I think is absolutely fine. But again, going overboard is, is not good by any means. Because the idea is not just um, getting away from foods that are very sweet tasting, but really eating healthy fats and healthy proteins, and they're never sweet. The worst thing we can usually do is combining proteins and, um, and fats, for example, and that's how and then sugars on top of it. Like think of a donut, that's probably the worst thing you can eat, although it doesn't have much protein. Um, but so again, we wanna make sure that we kind of separate this out a bit and we kind of want not too many sweet tasting things on a, on a daily basis. So yeah, so, sweet, so stevia has been around for a very long time. You know, it is very sweet, so we don't need a lot of it. It is about 200 to 300 times as sweet as sucrose. Um, it is a zero calorie sweetener. It gets uh, metabolized um, in mostly in the small intestine and it gets broken down into uh, smaller particles. And one of them is actually sugar, it's glucose. However, that glucose doesn't get absorbed and doesn't raise our blood sugar because it gets taken up by bacteria. So really for all practical purposes, you can look at stevia as a zero calorie sweetener. Now I wouldn't take any sweetener, any even natural sweetener, even stevia, monk fruit or allulose during your fasting period. And the reason is that there might still spike blood sugar. And there are some conflicting studies about this. But look, in your fasting period uh, overnight, you know, I recommend usually 16 hours for that. It should just be water and then in the morning, black coffee, espresso, uh, tea, in any amount you want. Just don't put anything in it. Don't put sweeteners of any kind into it or anything. Because it might still raise blood sugars. And again, also, we want to kind of get away from having sweet things all day long. But in moderation, I think stevia is fine. It's been around very long. I think it's a, it's a very good uh, uh, sweetener to use as a replacement, specifically when you have a blood sugar issue. And uh, I'm using it in several products, you know, I try to not do it more than once a day. And if you stick to, to that, you really will not have any issue with overdosing on this and it'll help tremendously then also, you know, with your weight management and your overall health.